Now is the winter of our discontent made glorious summer by this son of York. And all the clouds had lowered upon a house in the deep bosom of the ocean buried. Now are our brows bound with victorious wreaths, our bruised arms hung up for monuments, our stern alarums changed to merry meetings, our dreadful marches to delightful measures. A grim visaged wall hath smoothed his wrinkled front. Now, instead of mounting barbed steeds to fright the souls of fearful adversaries, he capers nimbly in a lady's bedchamber to the lascivious pleasings of a lute. But I that am not shaped for sportive tricks, nor made to court an amorous looking glass. I that am rudely stamped and want love's majesty to strut before a wanton ambling nymph. I that am curtailed of this fair proportion, cheated of feature by dissembling nature. Deformed, unfinished, sent before my time into this breathing world, scarce half made up, and that <laughs> so lamely and unfashionable the dogs bark at me as I hold by them. Why, I, in this weak, piping time of peace, have no delight to pass away the time. And as it be to spot my shadow in the sun, and descant on my own deformity. And since I cannot prove a lover to entertain these fair, well-spoken days, I am determined to prove a villain and hate to the idle pleasures of these days. Plots of laid, inductions dangerous, by drunken prophecy, libels, dreams, to set my brother Clarence and the king in deadly hate the one against the other. And if King Edward be as true and just as I am subtle, false, and treacherous, this day should Clarence closely be mewed up about a prophecy which states that G of Edward's heirs, the murderer shall be. Dive thoughts down to my soul. Here Clarence comes. Brother, good day.